So with the heat of the summer coming on, a lot of people are going to start seeing a lot of drought stress in their yards. And that is mainly due to lack of water or improper sprinkler coverage. So today we're going to go over the sprinklers that I have in my yard, why I like them so much, and the benefits of having those. So, let's go. first things that I do when I'm going through and checking my sprinkler system is I always check on a monthly basis my filters for my secondary. Now my secondary water has not been that bad this year but I always make it a habit to check it at least bi-weekly and clean them every month. If they're getting bad then I'll go ahead and clean them as well but let's take a look and see how they're doing. some egg sacs so definitely gonna have to spray for bugs one right there. I don't know if you can see him. He's right there in that corner, big old hobo. He's right there under that pipe. But he ain't gonna be alive for much longer. Okay, we're gonna shut off the main line. We'll relieve the pressure. And you can do this, at least on my system, by turning on a zone, or I've got my my uh, hose here, and I'll just, which taps into my secondary. I'll just allow it to drain itself. And there is the clogged. This is what a triple filter system will help do. I did take this ultra fine off uh, because it was clogging up super fast. Um, but we'll we'll see about putting it back on here. It doesn't look like I'm getting a ton. So when I go put this back together again, I'll put the ultra fine on there. Now, one of the reasons I like the heads that I use is because they do very, very well under low pressure conditions. So right now we're gonna check what our pressure is. Um, I'm just going to check the main pressure off the spigot here and uh, see what the pressure is on that. If I'm not mistaken, I should be coming in between 60 and 65 pounds. Now, I also have a pressure gauge that I can attach to the end of my pop-up uh, Rainbird heads and put the Hunter MP rotator nozzle on the end and be able to see what it is at each nozzle, each head because I believe that my pressure goes down quite a bit, especially on my most strips, but we'll get to that here in a second. So the pressure is actually lower than it has been in the past. I'm sitting at about 55 to 57 pounds per square inch, just from this one spigot. Um, which should be the same as it is for the entire system for each zone. Okay, so before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about MP rotators. Now, they are without question my nozzle of choice. I have been in love with these ever since. My brother, who I have to admit, runs a sprinkler system company and he does installation and, and mainly fixing everybody else's poor installations, which we've done a few videos on that, on what a poor installation is and what it looks like. When I moved down to Utah, my very first house, when I turned on the sprinkler system, we moved, and as soon as I turned it on, I knew I was gonna have problems because none of the heads lined up. I could see that there was gonna be coverage issues, and at that time, they were all just pop-up Rainbird fans, coverage which was very, very poor. You could tell that the person that installed it 
really didn't know what he was doing, and if he did, he installed it at a time that there was way more pressure than there was ever going to be in the future, once, especially when you have a newer subdivision and you start adding houses. So my brother happened to be down. He happened to have his, uh, some of his stuff with him. I was like, man, we're going to have to cut in some heads, and I really don't want to do that. And he says, well, let me tell you what. So we retroed the one zone that I was having the most trouble with, and it immediately fixed the problem. Within three to four days of watering, the grass was greening back up again, and since then I have been absolutely enamored, word for the day, with MP rotators. If you have a different feeling or opinion, that's perfectly fine. You do you. But I love these because not only can they adapt to low pressure situations, but you get a much better, deeper water because you're not flooding the area with water. It does take time to water with MP rotators. The reason being is because they usually put out a third of the volume per hour than what a regular pop-up fan would. That being said, because you're not throwing that much water out, your ground is able to absorb kind of like a light rain shower and allow the water to permeate down through and not getting oversaturated. And when anything gets oversaturated, it rejects everything else and the water just runs off and goes into your gutter and it's a complete waste. That's the other reason why I like MP rotators because I think I get a much better water. I've never had issues and any issues that do arise, I'm able to make small adjustments whether I get a nozzle that will throw a little farther. And there has been only one instance with me adding heads to my most strips that I've ever had to cut in uh, new heads. Now with MP rotators, they come in three series. There is a fourth one that's been added. But it's the MP1000, which throws from 8 feet to 15 feet, and that's according to the amount of pressure that you have or how much you will tone it down vis-a-vis -vis the arc and the radius, how much it shoots down. We'll go over that here in just a little bit. There's also the MP2000s, which can go from 13 feet to 20, up to 21 feet. The MP3000s which can go from 22 to 30 feet and they do have a MP3500 uh, it's only available in one arc style and I've had to use those and I've got three of them right now on some areas that I felt were getting a little dry and crispy and the thing I love about this it gives you all sorts of flexibility for whatever design you have on your yard it can adapt and you can get great coverage great permeation because that's the big that's the key permeation is the key when it comes to getting a good watering done on your yard and that's why I love MP rotator so much they also have side strips for your mow strips that will shoot about five to six feet out depending on how far you throw the radius out and 15 feet wide up to 15 feet wide to be able to get that stretch down Okay, when you're working on these MP rotators, you'll need a couple tools. First one is a pair of pop-up clamps. These will allow you, when the pop-up nozzle comes up, to be able to clamp it to the shaft and it'll keep it in place until you let release it to be able to change out nozzles, do whatever you need to do, um, but not have to worry about trying to grab it and hold it. You can also use it to grab the nozzle and get it pried up if your fingers won't work. The second tool that you'll need if you're working with MP rotators is this little tool. The circular one allows you to change the arc adjustment so that can go from as little as 45 degrees if you've got some nozzle all the way to 210 depending on the nozzle that you have. They've also got the 360 but that's a fixed 360 you can't adjust that one. And then you've got this little tip end which will then if you change it either clockwise or counterclockwise will adjust how far it throws or the radius of the throw of the nozzle. So the pressure for just this one zone is sitting at about 32, 34 pounds of pressure just per head. But remember, there's 35 heads on this one zone, and these are all my most strips. So there, I expected the pressure to be less, but uh, that's one of the things I love about these is they run on low pressure really, really well and can adapt to that. Um, but they can only go so far. You get too much lack of pressure if you dropped it all the way down to maybe 22 or 20 four pounds of pressure you might start to really see a significant drop in, in coverage. So on these nozzles when you're done setting them 
there's a little you can't really see it too well with the on the video but there's a little notch this notch needs to be to the left when you set it so right now it's here it needs to be over on this side okay so now it's on the left now and this is a right mo strip and the reason why you know it's right is because it comes to the end of where you're wanting it to spray this is right if we go down to this other end on the left it'll be the left corner and it's always standing behind where you're spraying not in not on the other side if i was to go on the other side it'd be the exact opposite so as you can see we've got it set to where it will come to the corner now we'll make a few adjustments to make sure that it's not spraying too much out onto the concrete of course you want it to get just to start up just as it's as the stream is getting to the edge of that so you probably want it to start somewhere on the concrete about here and then move over and then you can just easily adjust it with this tool these ones have a smaller adjustment pattern because they're pretty much set but that's about as low as it'll go as to there if you want it to set it more just to Okay, now as you can see, we've got it set. So this will go all the way to the right. It will spread out to this, but as, as I can see, it's only getting so far out. It's not getting farther to the far end, far side of the mow strip. Like its companion over here, it's shooting all the way over. So we're going to change the, the radius of the throw. So you simply take this end. It's got a little notch that you can, a little screw head that you can get it to. And we were going to increase it by turning it four full turns counterclockwise. And this will get you your maximum throw on that head. Now, this head, that's a lot of dirt. We're going to change that out. New filter in. set on our left and we'll get it started. Now this is a full side strip. So this one shoots 15 feet that direction and it'll shoot up to 5 feet across and out. Now it's a little, it's not quite throwing enough so we're going to change the arc on this one as well. Do that by inserting and going counterclockwise for full rotations. If I wanted to reduce it, and it would be clockwise.
for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for notifications on any future videos being posted. Also, like, share with your friends, and comment down below. It really helps. And we'll see you in the next one. It's Oakley again. The green lawn is amazing. That's the only other YouTuber I know, so pretty good. Okay, bye.